upon my soul. Come on, can you sing it with us this morning as we go through this?
feeling good to me. been better than good to me. We kind of turned it back on ourselves, but we want you to know that you are just so, so good. So many things that you have done for us, to us, and are consistently doing even right in this moment. You've been so good. You've been so good. Wow. Look. Mm. You are <laughs> yes. Woo, so good. <laughs> you are so good. You are so good. Come on, say it, y'all. You are <laughs> so good. Come on, right now. You are. Right in this moment, oh no. You are so good. You so good, yeah, yeah. You are uh, so good. And we're gonna leave it there. You are, you are so good. Mmm. We're just gonna leave it there. We're not even gonna turn it back on ourselves. You are so good. <laughs> I just get elated in my spirit and I have a chuckle in my spirit because I can think about the goodness of you. <laughs> Woo! And it's amazing, it's amazing, it's amazing, it's amazing. Oh, come on, come on, at least three more times. You are, come on, so good. You are. So good, one more time. So good. You are. You are. So good. Yes. Yes, so good. You are, you are, you are, you are. You are so good. You are 
Good morning, friendship and guests. He's been good to us. He's opened doors that no one can shut. He's been good. He is good. Our scripture reading for today comes from Matthew, the 25th chapter, verses 1 through 13 in the Message Bible. God's kingdom is like ten young virgins who took oil lamps and went out to greet the bridegroom. Five were silly and five were smart. The silly virgins took lamps but no extra oil. The smart virgins took jars of oil to fill their lamps. The bridegroom didn't show up when they expected him and they all fell asleep. In the middle of the night, someone yelled out, He's here. The bridegroom's here. Go out and greet him. The ten virgins got up and got their lamps ready. The silly virgins said to the smart ones, our lamps are going out. Lend us some of your oil. They answered, there might not be enough to go around. Go buy your own. They did, but while they were out buying oil, the bridegroom arrived. When everyone who was there to greet him had gone into the wedding feast. The door was locked. Much later, the other virgins, the silly ones, showed up and knocked on the door, saying, Master, we're here. Let us in. He answered, Do I know you? I don't think I know you. So stay alert. You have no idea when he might arrive. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. Gracious. Beloved Father, how awesome you are. Father, you are good. Oh, in your mercies and your grace forevermore that you bestow on your adopted children. Father, when we look at adopted, it means that you, of all the ones that you could chose for yourself, you chose us, Father. And we thank you. Oh, Father, I'm reminded in Scripture, as Hannah, a barren woman, had no children and she cried out to you God oh father from the inside out that you couldn't even hear her tears but you heard her moan you heard her whine for you God oh and you honored her prayer right now father in the country and across the land father oh there's an increase in the CV-19 father but we know that we're still in your loving arms we still in your sovereignty, Father. Oh, Father, you have given each and every one of us a measure of faith. Oh, like the woman who fought through the crowd just to touch the hem of your garment, Father, and was made whole, Father. Oh, but Father, we want more. Oh, we want to be like Mary, Father. Oh, we want to sit at your feet and cry out to you, Father. All those things that exalt itself against you, we want to cry them out, Father, at your feet. 
Oh, Father, our gossip, our unforgiving. Oh, Father, taking things in our own hands, coming up with our own mindset. Oh, Father, we are blinded uh, by this flesh that we can. We are blinded by it, Father. Oh, that we would sit at your feet under the pinions of your arms, that you would cover us, Father. That you would give us revelation and lift the blinded eyes, Father, that we will come to know you. Oh, Father God, I thank you for the grace and the mercy that you have given to us, Father, that we have another chance oh, to do it right. We get one more opportunity, Father, before you to get it right, that the sands of the hourglass do not run short, but, Father, we come to the acknowledgement of who you are in our lives. And we thank you, Father. Oh, God, that makes you good. Uh, you're so good in many other ways, but, Father, you would give us another opportunity, Father, Never leaving your hand, Father. Oh, we're on your wheel as you take out the mar and you take out those things that are not of you, Father. Oh, Father, but I heard a voice from heaven, God. You made us another again. <laughs> Only you can do things like that. Only you that have that kind of power. Only you, Father, can make over, Father. Oh, and I thank you. Oh, for your son, Jesus. Oh, the blood that spilled on Caucasus Hill. Father, that covers the multitudes of our past sins, our present sins, and those things we have yet to do. Oh, Father, forgiving God. And I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord. So now, Father, as we proceed forth. Uh, Oh, Father, let the words that come out of the revelator's mind and the heart, Father, that he has gotten from you, let that fall on fertile ground. That the people will hear, believe, and change. For, Father, you still hold the keys. In each palms of your hand, oh God, is each of our faces tattooed indefinitely. So, Father, your servant asks, look in the palms of your hand. See our needs. See our desires, Father. Oh, Father, and those things are not like you. Eliminate them, Father. Destroy them. That we come to agreement of what you're doing in the earth realm. That you are our God. You are our hope. You are all that we would need. And so, Father, we lift you now. Your servant gives you the honor and the praise. Oh, Father, through your son, Jesus, name, I lift you up now. Amen.
him glory. Something about that name. Something about that name. Go ahead and take a few minutes and just, just a few seconds and, tell, and just praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Ah, oh, oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, how precious. Oh, how precious. Oh, how precious. Oh, how precious. Ah, oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, bless his wonderful name. Bless his wonderful name. To want to say, oh, 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 oh. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, if you don't know him, you don't understand what's going on. But if two touch and agree, he'll be in the midst of us. Glory to his name. Glory, 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 glory. Oh, yeah. I feel a praise break, y'all. His holy name. Got you through another month. Bless his holy name. Yeah. Every now and then. You ought to take a few seconds that if you're looking for a radical blessing, you ought to give him a radical praise right about now. Forget who's in the room. Forget what you've been going through. All you need to know is that the name of Jesus is all over you. The name of Jesus is all in your spirit. The name of Jesus is what keeps you going. He is your doctor. He is your lawyer. He is your way out. He's your way in.
bless his name, bless his name. Oh, yeah. New beginnings. You are, you just, I just want you to throw this over you that if you've made it to here, you are now walking in new beginnings. He's getting ready to open some new doors. Excuse me. The doors, new doors have already been opened. New avenues have already been done. New dimensions are ready to be experienced.
the Lord. Point to your neighbor and say, walk in, walking in, walking in, I'm walking in, I'm walking in. I'm walking in, I'm walking in, I'm walking in, I'm walking in. Walking in. Ah, I'm, 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 I bless the Lord for time. For, for Tanya changing that because anytime somebody says I'm, I'm going to walk in means they ain't made up their mind to walk in and, and in, in prophetic in prophetic and when the atmosphere is set for prophetic you got to be careful what you say and we're not singing to that people could get released we're singing about their release and so you got to say it right so that they get on the right check walking in I'm walking in my anointing I'm walking in my new door. I'm walking in the privilege and the opportunity that he has got. I'm doing it right now. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord. Welcome, 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 welcome. We welcome you that you would come and share with us the glory of the Lord. Oh, yeah, we welcome you that you would understand there's a feast going on. The table has been spread, and the glory of the Lord is here. We bless God for this opportunity. We thank him for you even fellowshipping with us right now. We thank God for this grand opportunity to be included in his plan every now and then you ought to have a radical moment that you forget about the program and forget about everything else and you allow yourself to look and think and just praise God for who he is praise him for who he is and then thank him for what he's done glory to the name Oh, how precious is his name. Father, we bless you right now. And we keep giving you glory and we give you honor. And now as we have gotten to this place, Father, we pray for clarity of speech. and Give us precision of thought pattern. That, that your word will go forth and it will do what you have it to do give life honor you father line up with your written word and change people's lives father in the name of Jesus thank you for the opportunity to be a part of your program in the name of Jesus we bless you now we give you praise in Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you today. I want to start something new today um, just to talk about it. We're going to do a little fun work, but I want you to, to look at Matthew, the 25th chapter is where we're going to be coming from. The um, um, first through the 13th, and you know I'm not going to get through 13 verses, and, uh, but I'm going to do the best I can. Um, and we're going to talk about it, and I want to talk about background because it's important for what we're trying to do um, this morning. I want to take the time out to thank everyone behind the scenes, whatever they have done and do, to help make this moment possible. Um, uh, whatever area you have ministered in, I pray the richness of God's blessings. To you out there, I, I pray that this, this series of what we're going to be talking about for, for a little bit, I want you to take real listen, to tune your ears so that you will not think about anybody else but you. You, you have special permission to be selfish on this word because it's geared for us. We started preaching and teaching um, back in March and well through May. 
because everybody was scared. Just fear. And, and, and then we got there and we started getting a little comfortable about what we had to do. You know, y'all watched me go through not liking this camera to say, okay, it's what he called for and trying to get it done. And, and we're going to talk more about it, but, but in this season that we're in, we have come to a place where we actually have invested a lot. We've had to make changes, and there's more changes going to be made in order to address where we are. And, and then the next part is, is where we're turning the corner and getting ready to do it. But I, I want you to understand that you have not been saved through this period of time. That there won't be promise at the end. Because he's still going to be faithful to whatever he promised. Second thing is that also, you've got responsibilities. Our text is going to talk about it real, 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 real short. And then next time we're going to talk a little more about, about the other side of it. But today, I want you to keep in mind what 1 Corinthians 16 and 9 says. Uh, it, it says, Paul was saying this. And he says, because a great door of effective work, and in other translation, it says that he has set before me opportunity. And I want you to grab that because many times we're missing the open door. That's, that's why that was so prophetic, how, how Tanya grabbed that and how the praise team grabbed that, because that's where we wanted to go. And, and it took I was trying to figure out how we're going to go from, from, from precious is his name to open the door. And God said, I got this. <laughs> I said, thank you, Lord. And, and, and because I, I, don't, I really don't want to spend the next two or three weeks, I don't want to shout about it. I really want to teach about it. And if, if you teach it, if it's taught right, it'll produce its own shout. Okay? Um, you know, anybody that cooks, you know, if you cook meat right, it makes its own gravy, okay? And so that's what I want. I, I want to talk, come in, in this direction of coming to you. Um, we're going to be talking about parables. And, and, and a parable is a short story that teaches uh, a spiritual or moral lesson. Usually it uses common factors, all the time it uses common factors, but they have deep spiritual meaning. Jesus, Jesus was notorious for his parables. And, you know, the one that we always talk about is, you know, um, a blind trying to lead the blind. They all fall in the ditch. And it illustrates that, that, that a person cannot talk about somebody else's shortcomings or help them when they don't correct their own shortcomings. That, that's, that was a quick parable right there, okay? But, but I want to talk about the one in Matthew 25, and we're going to talk about all three of them over the course of time, because all three of them deal with opportunity, then you have responsibility, and then you have discipleship. And see, all three of these things are what God has called us to in this season. As we go forth to do what the Lord has stated for us to do. I want to look at verse 10, verse 1, excuse me, of the 25th verse. And, 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 and it says, the kingdom, I'm going to be real kind of um, scriptorial here. It says that the kingdom of heaven is likened to two ten virgins. So, so first of all, I, I want you to understand that the primary interpretation of this text is it speaks of the coming of the Lord Jesus and how we as Christians ought to be prepared for his coming. What I want to do now that I have given the interpretation of it, I want to make an application 
into our daily lives, into this season, into where we at. I want to apply the principles of the interpretation to this season of where we are, this, this, this kuras moment that God has caused regular stuff to either become not in void or just cut it off. And we're searching for something new. And we don't even know what the package is supposed to look like. That's how new it's going to be. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, so the first thing you got to understand, the kingdom of heaven is going to be and is a literal kingdom. Now, now watch this. But the kingdom of heaven cannot manifest itself until you and I get it in our minds. Because anything that has ever been started in the mind of God. Can, can I pause here for a moment? If you really look at it, some of the stuff that you wanted, it's just been in your eyes. It ain't been in your mind, in your spirit. Some of the things that, that, are, that are making you cry is because to stop it has not gotten in your spirit. And when it gets into your spirit, it will materialize. So the kingdom of heaven starts off in a period of time in your mind and then it will manifest itself. So the flavor must first be introduced. It opens up. And it comes in relative time to what is called an opportunity. The whole thing, it says, he says, this whole wedding scenario is equivalent to opportunities that have to materialize in your life. Here, here we go. It says that there was ten virgins and they took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Now, under in the backdrop of this text, it was in the evening, they had lamps that they put oil in and, and listen to what made them separate between being wise and being foolish. Okay? It says, now five of them was wise and five of them were foolish. He said, those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them, okay? But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. What makes them wise? What makes them foolish? Think about it. Lamps in this text is, is a symbol of the life you have. Oil in the text is a symbol of what gives light from the oil, from the lamp. I want y'all to catch that. So the text suggests that these people who called themselves going forth to an opportunity thought that what they had in their life was enough. Can I pause there for a moment? Because I want you to think about it. Do you have what it takes in your life to bring forth the light that's necessary, not for the occasion, but for the long haul? Because our Christian walk, our Christian job, our duty is to be there for the long haul. It's not just a destination. It really is a journey. Here, 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 here came the thing. It says, it says in here, it says, but while the bridegroom delayed, they slumbered and slept. Delay is what always proves the, the, the value of your light. The worth of your oil. 
Here's two set of people waiting, looking. Five of them walk in there with what they had, half full, thinking it's going to be right away. Can we be honest? How many of us have messed up because we thought life was going to be right away? I just need you to catch that because, because the oil you had came from mama them. The oil you had came from your friends. The oil you had and they taught you was enough. Even the religion you was hung, just you had that religion that gave a flicker of a light. And you know, all of us was at one point in our lives really thinking, oh, it don't take all that. I can get by. Some of us right now still working on that same premise. But the reality is delay when something doesn't go your way. Delay proves your loyalty to him. Proves what's on the inside of you. How many times have you wanted something and it didn't happen? How, how, how did you have enough oil to make it or did you quit? I'm telling you, this season that we're in, although it might not have been ordered by God, it, it's being used by God for you to see, for us to see how and what kind of oil we have in us. It, it separates the foolish from wise. So, I hope you're catching what I'm saying because I'm almost finished. Because the reality is, on this segment, when delay comes, what do you have to fill your oil and your lamp with? What are you using as oil? You see, oil itself is a precious commodity that speaks of eternal relationships. Oil is, is, is that thing that, that, that you got to be cracked to get real oil. Especially from the olive. Over in Israel, when we go, you're going to see that but what happens is, is that the first round, the meat is ground up and the oil or the juice from the outside green part or black part of the olive or purple part of the olive comes in there and it falls and it's called the flash oil. You don't, you know, and, and flash oil is just like the word. It lasts, but a flash. Oh yeah, I need y'all to see that because the problem is, the problem is Jesus spoke about them. He said in the old church and he said that there were some seeds that were sown and some were sown in shallow ground. That's equal to the flash. He said because when trials came, when tribulation came, it says that they couldn't take it. And in the old church, they would tell you, sit down because you don't have enough, you're not rooted enough. You see, the reality is, is that some of us have been going on flash oil. And flash oil don't last all night. Uh, flash oil doesn't hang in there when folk talk about you. Flash oil doesn't hang in there when it gets dark. Because when it's dark, you're still supposed to be able to have a light. Flash oil. Looks good for the time that it flashes. But when the flash is over, there's nothing else it can pull from. So here, here, here's that. Here, here you are. Here, that's what the foolish virgins brought for a all-nighter. Now, I, I know, I know 
I'll just talk about me. I remember I, I wasn't good at third shift. I just wasn't, I, I tried to work it and I learned how to, I learned how to work it. Did I'd go in at, at 10.30 and I wasn't supposed to get off at seven. So I get everything together from 10.30 to about three o'clock, go back in the bar behind the curb, behind there and sit on the curb and sleep this at my watch for 5.30 because the bosses didn't come in until six and everything be said, I began, but I would have to sleep. Hmm. Here, here it is. The wise ones who had flash oil went to sleep. And, 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 the, and the, 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 the foolish ones who had the flash oil went to sleep, but also the wise went to sleep. So, so I can't really say that sleeping was the problem. I'd like to, 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 to deviate just a little bit because, because I'm concerned that in the atmosphere of waiting on the bridegroom, why wouldn't the folk that had oil, why wouldn't they still shouting? Why wouldn't they still praising? Why weren't they happy because he's coming? But, but that isn't what the scripture says that made them have a distinguishing mark. It says that they all went to sleep. And but then they all woke up at a cry. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. And they, they all got up. And, and, and I guess if you understand a lamp that from, from, from the smoke, you got to clean it. Hmm. That's a point right there, but I'm not going to go there. And you'd have to trim it and clean it and make sure so that it would, so that it would begin to shine. But the five foolish got up, cleaned the globe, cleaned the glass, shook the lamp, and it was empty. Turned to the folk that brought extra oil and said to them, give us of your oil. I know the sanctified saved folk would say, you supposed to share. No, let me tell you, there are times in your relationship with God yes, sir. that you don't have enough to share anybody else. There are some things that you can only, we as a people can only get from God. You can ride on everybody's coattail for a while. You can use everybody else's name for a while. But baby, there comes a time when you, every tub, has got to sit on its own bottom. Yes, Lord. Yeah. So they said, no, go to them that sell. They, they, they clean their gobs off the, the wise. And refilled their lamp. Ain't that something? Jumped up and the doors flew wide open. Who, tell me, maybe, maybe, maybe I missed it, but tell me who was ready for the opportunity of a new dimension? Real simple. Because while the doors were open for those that were ready, those that were not ready had to go back to and find a late 7-Eleven. Now, I, I don't know, but I just assume in the text they must have found it because they came back knocking. Isn't that crazy? You had time all night to go get your oil. You waited till the cry of the door being opened that he's on the way. He's down the street. He's in the next corner in the next 10 minutes. And then you decide you don't have enough. I just, I just, I just need to pause. I'm so tired of our black church walking around here with flash oil. 
I'm so tired of our black men walking around here with flash oil. I'm so tired of our black women walking around here. You've had opportunity to get yourself together. You've had occasion. Protest all you want to, but don't miss the opportunity to register to vote. Don't flash oil me. There comes a time when opportunity is only ready for them that are ready. Our parents and our foreparents and, and, and all those that have died for the privilege that we have. They didn't live in the houses that we now live in. They didn't have and drive the cars that we now drive. And dare us go tear up our own neighborhood. Miss the opportunity to do real constructive work. This is just a word. Just warning you and just saying to you and encouraging you. You have an opportunity before you. We're going to finish the rest of it. But, but, but you have an opportunity before you in this season coming through this period of time the unrest is not just unrest it's really saying it's an opportunity that you as a person can get the oil that you need get into an intimate relationship with God so that he will show you the guidance that you need oil opportunity Oil, opportunity. Stop being <laughs> half full. <laughs> I, I was trying to, I was trying, I'm being saved this month. If, if you already know the oil you have, won't let you get into the positions you want to. Go get some oil. You already know the oil you have is not keeping your family together, not helping your finances, not giving you clear thought. Go get some oil. It ain't even midnight yet, y'all. So you got time. You can do it right now. This oil that I offer you today is that of a relationship with the Father. Man, he wants you to come. He wants you to have oil that will fill you up so that you'll have joy in the midst of sorrow. Give you an oil that will make you smile while your friends are dogging you in the back. Oil that while jealousy runs over because people don't like where you are. But you'll have enough oil to slide right through. Ah, this oil. Don't, 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 don't go for flash oil. Don't go for just trying to look good or fit in. He promised you the head, not the tail. He promised you the top, not the bottom. He promised you to be the lender, not the borrower. He promised the house was yours. He promised that whatever you wanted, you can have it. But it takes oil. You got to know him for yourself. And all that takes is, is Father, here I am. In the name of Jesus, I receive you as my Savior. And I surrender up my flash oil for some real oil. Some oil that will help me to endure. Oil that will make a change in my life. Ah, don't, don't, you don't have to stay in the foolish category. Come on. 
go with me. Let's get some oil. Jesus went to Calvary that this oil would become so powerful in our lives. He went to Calvary for that. They hung him high and they stretched him wide. They pierced him in the side and blood came streaming down. The songwriter said, he that had no place to lay his head, he laid his head in the locks of his shoulders, dropped his head and said, it is finished. The price has been paid. Ah, he died for every sin, every shortcoming. And all you have to do is believe it today. Take and, and eat all of this. Blood ran down, ran down Calvary's cross, ran down Israel, ran across the Mediterranean Sea, ran across the Italian boot, ran across the Atlantic Ocean, ran down through even South Carolina up to the Virginia. I don't know about you, but it ran all the way to Rossford, Ohio one day. This same blood. And mama said that it's the blood that shall never lose its power. After 2020 years, it still saves to the utmost. So glad. Take this and drink all of it for the remission of your sins. And the prophetic on it that says one day, we will eat and drink with him in his father's kingdom. Father, we thank you again for this time. We thank you for your people out there that they will one day receive the totality and fulfillment of all their promises, the promises you've given to them. So at this day and time, we thank you for your word we thank you for who you are. In Jesus' name, y'all be blessed. We thank you now. May the Lord God bless you. May the Lord God keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and grant you everlasting peace. Amen. Inhabit my praise, Lord. Inhabit my praise. Inhabit my praise, Lord. Inhabit my praise. I lift my hands to you. I worship and adore you. Inhabit my praise. Inhabit my praise. right here at this time as you are giving God your praise your hallelujahs your glories your glories your hallelujahs your magnificent gods whatever your word of praise is right now you are asking him to inhabit inhabit to live in it to be inside of it to be all around up in it <laughs> in the song we said I lift my hands to you I lift my hands and I worship and adore you because you are all around all up and through there <laughs> inhabit our praise oh God we want you there we want you there in the midst